Hallelujah. Use me, Lord. Good morning. Good morning to all. God bless you today. We honor God for you. We're looking forward to the blessing of the Lord. It causes us to triumph. The Lord is good and he's worthy to be praised. It's a beautiful day because this is the day the Lord has made. Our assignment today is to rejoice and be glad, be glad, be glad in it. So I ask everyone to put on your joy, put on your strength. Let's be glad in the Lord for who he is and for what he's already done. God bless you, Elder Gaston. Pastor Gaston, God, we appreciate you today. We give yes. God the glory. I'll let you have a moment to greet the saints as we uh, go through some adjustments. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. It's good uh, to be here in the land of the living. Amen. It's good to be here in this virtual God's house, if we will. Amen. I thank God for everything that he has done for me. Uh, um, I thank God for everything that he has done for you and he is doing for you. Amen. So let's be glad and rejoice. Amen. And where we are today. Amen. So at this time, I'm just going to have you ask you all at this time to bow your heads as we go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we glorify you. Lord, we thank you for your greatness. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for everything that you have done for us, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for keeping us through these uh, presented times. And Lord, we Thank you that you are allowing us to see a light of day, at least in some areas of all this craziness. But God, we yet know that you are in control. You are still the true and living God. Lord, you are still our savior. And Lord, we still have ministry and work that we have to do in the midst of the trouble. And Lord, we ask that you give us all strength right now, strength to make it through and power to push through these times and still do what you have called us to do. Lord, we ask you to bless this day, bless the deliver of the word on today, oh God, and bless your people that will hear it so that our hearts and our minds will be changed and looking toward you. And Lord, we still yet await for your coming. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. And I'm also going to read in your hearing uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. And it says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt and where the thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Where is your heart today? Amen. We thank and praise God for the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Aaron, appreciate that. And indeed, we honor God and we bless him because he is indeed worthy to be praised. We give God the glory. This has been a tremendous day. I want you to take a moment and greet one another if you already haven't. Hey, this is a Sunday that we celebrate Jesus. Take a moment, share with somebody what good thing God is doing in your life. See who's in the room with you. It's another day the Lord has blessed us. Look how far he's brought us. Look what he's done. There's no God like our God. None can do what our God can do. That's right. Just bless the Lord. Take a moment. Good to see you, sisters and brothers. Good to see that God is working things out for you. 
when I think about my story. Oh, yeah, y'all. Hallelujah. Well, we praise God. He keeps on doing great things. We believe that God is going to do just what he said he's going to do. He will not let your enemies triumph over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. They tried, but it didn't work. How many are still here? Through the storm, through the disease, through crises, we're still here. Hallelujah. God is yet working on our behalf. But we got a right to praise him. We got a right to bless him. And we got a right to give him glory. Well, God bless each of you. I'm excited to be in the Lord's house. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I continue to rejoice. And I'm glad in him. There's none like him. And nobody can do the things that God can do for us. Thank you, Pastor Aaron. We appreciate you and your support. And to all the saints and members of Old Landmark, to the supporters, those who fellowship with us on a regular basis throughout the week, we honor you and we appreciate what you are to the kingdom and what you're doing for us. It's been a, a, a great session, a great week, a great time of God's love and God's sharing, blessing the churches. Our church, the Church of God in Christ, has gone through uh, quite a bit, as many of you know, if you keep up with the news and church news, we've lost so many leaders and pastors and mothers and missionaries uh, to the COVID virus. Over the past year, year and a half, as you know, some have died. You probably know people have gone to be with the Lord unexpectedly due to this particular virus or uh, the virus was, a, was a, a contributor to their demise. But through it all, the word of God is yet being preached and taught in every city and throughout all the nation. Our own uh, leader, the Honorable Bishop Charles Edward Blake, had uh, indicated that he would step aside and has having completed what he believes was God's assignment for him. He has served uh, honorably for the last 14 years. And he asked to be emeritized, which means to be a place in a place of honor where he can step aside and let someone else fill that seat and continue as the presiding bishop. Also uh, a very uh, renowned and prolific writer, excellent Bible teacher, the person of Bishop George Dallas McKinney of San Diego had done the same. These men of God saw time, saw the times changing and had other assignments they wanted to complete before the Lord would call them in. The day that we would honor them, the day that uh, we would have the election of the new presiding bishop and general board, the Lord called Bishop McKinney home on the very day he was to be emeritized which was yesterday, March the 20th. And it was also the very same day the Lord called Bishop G.E. Patterson home 14 years ago. Our lives are interconnected. Our spirits are interconnected. Even sometimes our death is interconnected. But the glory in this is that you see that God is in control and that he is managing our lives and is making sure that the church understands that he is involved. So we don't, do not count these things to be coincidence. These are nothing but the manifest destiny of God to let his people know, I know who you are. I know where you are. I know what you're going through, and I'm able to bring you out. Somebody put a praise right there. Hallelujah. He's able to bring us out. And so as a result, uh, six men were voted to replace the vacancies that were caused by the uh, COVID-related uh, demise and the other illness-related demise of our four general board members, Bishop P.A. Brooks of Detroit went to be with the Lord, Bishop Nathaniel Wells, Muskegon, Michigan, went to be with the Lord, Bishop Matthew Williams of Tampa, Florida, went to be with the Lord, and Bishop Ted Thomas of Norfolk, Virginia, also resting with the Lord. And these men were honorable, served our great church. I loved them, appreciated them, had a wonderful personal relationship and fellowship with them. And I think it's nothing but a right on a day like today, 
when they would have been honored had they lived, that we take a moment and remember them and remember their work. I especially want to thank God for Bishop George McKinney. Bishop McKinney was a friend of my father-in-law, uh, Elder Cleophas Hall, and through Elder Hall back in the 80s, I became acquainted with Bishop George McKinney. Bishop McKinney embraced me as a son, has tutored me throughout the life of my ministry, was excited for my call to preach, and followed me through uh, the career of my life. He was the one that gave me my first initiation into the national work when he called me in 1995 and asked me to go to Africa on behalf of the Church of God in Christ, where I would go and represent along with 600 other Americans in a back to Africa trip so that the Church of God in Christ would also be a part of the back to Africa movement. So we thank God and he, uh, for Bishop McKinney, he always kept me in his heart and his mind and his sons, whom I love as my own brothers and his dear first wife departed, Mother Jean, and his wife, Sister BJ, who was the wife at the time of his death, all honorable people of God who love God. So we honor them. Bishop Blake, we thank God for you and your life, and may you continue to live and prosper and fulfill the dreams you have in the kingdom for West Angeles Church of God in Christ. And I believe God will do just that for you. Moving forward, we do want to thank God for my own brother-in-law, Bishop David Hall, who is the prelate of the headquarters jurisdiction of Memphis, Tennessee, pastor of the historic Mother Temple Church of God in Christ, which was the church of our founder. And now David Hall has been elevated to the office of general board member of the Church of God in Christ. And I thank God for that elevation, excited for my own brother, Brother Hall, being promoted to the office of general board member as well, many other new board members. But we also want to thank God for a newly elected presiding bishop. The newly elected presiding bishop is our own Bishop J. Drew Sheard, who has been a friend of this ministry, has come down to Fort Wayne to preach at Old Landmark and blessed us during our legacy celebration. And we communicated regularly all throughout this time. And so I'm very excited that God has promoted him. And we thank God for the newly elected first, first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Jerry Macklin, as well as the second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Lawrence Wooten. All of these men have served honorably, they've proven themselves, and now they have an opportunity to shape the church as we reimagine church for what it can be and what it should be. With that said, we do thank God for our local church, our pastors that are working with me, Pastor Aaron and Pastor Darthanian Nichols. Pastor Nichols hails from the city of Detroit, amen, where the Breaking Chains Overcoming Ministries is uh, doing a phenomenal work there on the, uh, on, in the city of New Troy, Detroit. I'm trying to remember the street name. I know it's a French name, uh, Campo. I think I got that right, something like that. But if you're ever in Detroit, look him up and you'll be blessed. He is our speaker today. And he is the one that God has anointed for the youth and for all of us who want to be young. Tune in, pay attention, see what God has to say. God bless you, Pastor Nichols. Amen. God bless you. So such an honor to be here. Um, give an honor to our leader, Bishop Amos, First Lady Amos, all of the elders and the uh, missionaries, the mothers, all the brothers and the sisters. Uh, first off, I want to start off by saying congratulations to our newly elected um, presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard of the Church of God in Christ. Um, bishop, we are excited. We are looking forward to your leadership and what God um, is going to do through you in taking our church to the next level. Um, to all the newly elected general board members, um, to uh, the first and second assistant presiding bishop, um, and I give shout out to my own interim bishop, Bishop Cedric Daniels for being reelected to uh, the uh, general board of the Church of God in Christ. Um, I do not take this uh, time lightly being able to preach. Um, we are in such a time of change and as things are changing, uh, I was talking to the Lord and I'm, I'm grateful um, for the ability to hear him. So as I was talking to the Lord, I said, Lord, what would you have me to say um, to the people today? So as we're getting ready, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to, to click like, love, drop some hearts, and share, share, share. 
If you're a part of different groups on Facebook, this is how we get the message out. This is Evangelism Youth Sunday. It is Yes Sunday, Youth and Evangelism Sunday. So we want to do just that. So I want you to share, like, share. So if you are part of, you know, another group on Facebook, another ministry group, post the video there, share it there. If you have a group of friends that you um, you talk to an own personal group, post the video there. Because even though everybody won't be able to be um, right in the same place, if we can just share it and use our spirit influence, you will be amazed how much the word will get out. So to those in our Puerto Rico jurisdiction, if you're watching with us, post and share. To those in Indiana, post, like, and share. To those right here in Detroit, Michigan, post, like, and share. We are excited about what God is going to do. Bishop, the name of the street is Joseph Campo. You, you were right there, sir. So if you're ever in Detroit, Michigan, you can join us any Saturday at 7 p.m. at 13881 Joseph Campo. Um, we are an urban ministry with a traditional message, and we preach Jesus. Now, if you will turn with me, if you can today, to the book of Luke and to the book of Acts, um, I won't be before you long. I feel a stirring. And like I always say to my old landmark family, I cannot wait until we are able to be together. And I guess I should give what I say every month. So if you're watching, we welcome you to the hour of power, the hour of breakthrough, the hour of freedom. It is Yes Sunday, and we are about to give God another yes. So I want you to go ahead and drop some clap hands, drop some hearts, some woo-hoo, but be excited because God is about to have his way. The book of Luke in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, you will find this scripture to them. Behold, I will send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and all of the uttermost places of the earth. Today, I want to have a subject topic, and I just want to take it back old school for the day, and I just need somebody to type and say, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've, I've got the infilling of the Spirit of God. I've got it. I've got what I need in order um, to get the job done. I've got it. I got what God promised so I can go and do the task that he had sent me to do. Um, I don't want to deal with theology today, but I just want um, to remind the people that in order for us to be successful at what God needs us to do, that we're going to need help from on high. In order for us um, to go and go and to do great exploits, uh, um, we need power from on high. If you study your Bible, you will understand that we see a transition um, versus the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the people didn't have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Um, God's Spirit will fall upon them um, only when they had a task to do, um, that they will come and it will overshadow them and they will do whatever God needed them to do. But once the assignment was done, you won't see the Holy Spirit moving in them like it had done before. Um, so we see God giving us something different that the Holy Spirit will overshadow in the Old Testament. But when we get to the New Testament, we see the same Holy Ghost, but a different mission. We see the same Holy Ghost, but a different approach. Um, that when we get to the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, uh, that we no longer are overshadowed with the Spirit of God, but we're filled with the Spirit of God. Um, I need you today to understand that if you have already been blood washed up. I need you to be filled with the Holy Ghost that I can't do what I need to do without the power from on high. I, I can't conquer the giants I need to conquer without the power from on high. So in the book of Acts, we see that now it's not about falling on me, but it's about fill me. Oh God, oh God, I need you to give me power. I need you to give me strength. I, I need you to send the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. When we understand, somebody just say, feel me, feel me, feel me. I felt that. I felt that I'm getting chubby, but I felt that one. Feel me. Um, I need you to understand that that when it comes to being filled with the spirit, like I said, I really don't want to deal um, with theology, but I just want to let you know um, the blood cleansed us. The blood cleansed us. 
the blood, um, it, 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 it saved us. Um, but it is, it is the spirit of God that empowers us. Um, we understand that with us being the church of God in Christ, we understand that this is a familiar saying. What are you saying, preacher? Well, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers that ask for it. This is no strange language. This is what we believe. Well, we also believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whom in dwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. World. Listen to this, that we believe the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by when, when it indwells and it lives inside of us, that you, the Christian, is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. I'm not talking about separated, where you say, well, I can't hang with them, but I mean that even in the midst of darkness, something looks different about you because of the Holy Ghost. I, I need you to know that every believer, every blood watch believer ought to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm not talking about your tongues. We got folk that talk in tongues one second and cuss me out in a human tongue. We, we got folk that talk in tongues. They don't know how to love their neighbor. We got folk that can talk in tongues and they don't know how to treat their neighbor. We got folk that talk in tongues, um, but they only do is backlight. But I'm talking about those that are filled with the Holy Ghost and they are saved five and you can tell there's a difference you can tell that there is a difference when we when we have the power of the holy ghost there are some things that we need to realize we there are some things that will happen to us when we have the power of the holy ghost thing number one i want you to know that the holy ghost will change us mentally it will change us mentally um i i remember um when i got saved for real you know, you no, know, we get saved a lot, but you know, when you when you finally make that choice, like, okay, I'm really gonna be different. Okay, you know, you know, our young folk, y'all, y'all been there. You know, you go to the youth services every month, you get saved every month, and you know, you get down, you get down on Friday night, <laughs> God, you know, you do that, and then you get saved, and you do good for about a week or two, and then you know, two weeks later, you be right back to the same old thing, right? Um, but when I got saved for real, um, and I and I tell this story often that I got saved and um, growing up, you know, I had a different view. We were taught different things about the church I grew up in and it was nothing bad. But when I got saved for real, um, I knew there had to be more to my walk. Um, I remember trying to do things in my own strength when I got saved. I remember trying to do it, you know, my way um, when I got saved. And so um, we started doing some, some more reading on the Holy Ghost and some more reading on being filled. And um, I had a work mom by the name of Kim Moore. And um, she would drop little books by um, Kenneth Hay Haggai in my mailbox and, and it was always about being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and, and so she would always put them in my mailbox and, and I would read them and actually I still have all the books to this day and I was like almost 15, six, 15 years ago. I saw every book she gave me and so she was giving me these books about being filled with the Holy Spirit and so I would read the books and I would, I would put them next to the Bible and I would read the Bible and I would say what the Bible said about being filled with the Holy Spirit and so um, I I didn't believe in tarrying. What it means is I didn't believe going down to a service and clapping my hands at the altar because that's not what, what I believe the Bible said. I, when I read the Bible, the Bible said that um that it, that I, it will be given to me, that all I have to do is ask and I shall receive it, right? So I begin to say, well, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me. I knew I was saved. I said, fill me, right? So I said, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And so um, I then said, well, I don't feel any difference. So maybe I just didn't get it. So that was my prayer again. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I kept praying that, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And, and I prayed it, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And then I realized, even though I didn't believe Terry at the altar, I realized the fact that I knew that I felt like I didn't have the Holy Spirit yet, that I was tearing and waiting on God to fulfill the promise. Well, one night I was laying in my bed and the Holy Spirit woke me up and told me to begin to pray. I turned my feet, I put my feet on the floor and I said, well, honey, wake up. 
um, the Lord told me to pray. And she said, well, go ahead. And I said, all right. And so as I sat there to pray, the Lord said, no, get dressed. Put your shoes on. I want to take you somewhere. And I was like, oh, man. And I got up. And it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. I put some pants on. I put a hoodie on. I put some shoes on. And I walked out the door. And I walked through my apartment building. Walked downstairs. Got to the front door. The Lord said, walk down the street. I walked down the street. And as I was walking down the street, he said, stop and sit right here. I sat on a rock that sat on the corner of Seward and Second. And as I sat on the a rock. Um, I begin to sit there and I said, well, Lord, you woke me up to pray. So I begin to pray. And y'all, I prayed with everything in me. I prayed for the community. I prayed for our state leadership. I prayed for the leadership of our church. I prayed for the leadership of our city. I prayed for my family. I prayed for my friends. And y'all, I was praying real good. But 15 minutes into my prayer, I started running out of prayer gas. I didn't have the same fervor that I had when I started praying. And so I started slowing down. For once I was like, ew, 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 ew. now I'm like, well, Lord, amen, hallelujah, Lord, have your way, have your way. And don't you know that when I begin to get slow, all of a sudden I felt the unction of God and he took over me and I began to pray. But this time when I began to pray, it wasn't in my own language. And now here I am at 1.30 in the morning, standing on a street corner and I'm praying and speaking in tongues and I'm standing up and I'm looking around and I'm saying is there anybody to be a witness to see what God is doing because I had asked him to fill me with the Holy Ghost and the Lord said to me when you asked I had sent it but this is the evidence that I've given you what you've asked for and I stood right there and I just kept praying and as I begin to pray more I begin to weep and I didn't know what the problem was and and then after I got done praying in tongues, I came back to English and the Holy Spirit told me what to pray. And these words came out of my mouth. And I said, Lord, for all the spilled blood right here on this corner, Lord, for the babies right here on this corner. Y'all, I said, amen. I ran back down to my apartment and I was so excited. I said, the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost. And now I had now thought about everybody else when I heard those stories, how they would respond like that. And I said, oh, that's too much. But now I had had my own experience. And so the next day after I got up and I was curious about what I had prayed. And as I began to do some looking, found out that Right where I lived, back in the early 70s and 80s, there was an abortion clinic on the next corner. And when I found that out, you could have knocked me over with the feather. And the Lord said, now you have the evidence that I sent what you've asked for. And he said, now get up and live like you know how to live. And I said, get up and live like I know how to live. He said, now you can live before me holy. Now you can live before me sanctified. It was at that moment that he had given me power to do what I could not do before. And now I was able to live a separated life. Believers, I need you to know that the only way you're going to make it in, somebody say holiness, and it's going to take the Holy Ghost to keep you. That it is because of the infilling of the Holy Spirit that I'm able to be kept. It is because of the keeper and the comforter that I don't fall and walk where I used to go. It is because of the infilling of the Holy Ghost that I have not lost my mind and I thank God for what he's done for me. Listen to this. The next thing that's going to happen, I hope this is helping somebody. I just see somebody say, I got it. I got it. Real quick, have a flashback when you first got filled with the Holy Spirit and you had the evidence of it and he had the outward evidence of it. Um, I think back, what not a good plan. I, I, I thank God for that night. Listen to this. Thing number two, now that we know that the Holy Spirit will change me mentally, it will change me from the inside. The next thing that I know is that the Holy Ghost is going to charge me to be a witness. Um, We got so many folk talking about how God is with them, but yet you have not been a 
witness in the world. You go to work and nothing has changed at your job. Your family is falling apart and you're saying, well, who's going to do it? You're going to do it because now that you've got the Holy Ghost, you've been charged to be a witness now. To be a witness doesn't just mean to testify to what God has done, but it means to exercise what God has done. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to cast out demons. You'll be able to pray for the sick and they shall recover. You'll be able to seek God. You'll be able to get God to do things that you never thought that he would do. When you have the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you have to do it and you will have demonstration and the fruit. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. And I'm a firm believer that those of us that have been blood washed, blood bought, and filled with the Holy Spirit, um, now you got the ability to demonstrate what God has done. Jesus said it like this. If you don't believe the work that I say, believe the works that I do. You got some work to do. You got to demonstrate what God has done in your life. You got to demonstrate that God has given you the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost folk don't walk around like the world. We walk around like world changers. That There's not one problem that I can't beat. There's not one giant that I cannot take down because I have the demonstrating power of the Holy Ghost. When was the last time somebody called on you to believe what was inside of you and you were able to demonstrate the authentic power of God? This is why we're the Pentecostal church because we just don't have a sound. We have a sound that comes with demonstration that when we get the Holy Ghost it comes with a language change. When we get the Holy Ghost, it ought to bring us to bear some fruit. And after you bear some fruit, you ought to be able to do some stuff you've never done. I need the body of Christ today to understand that God is calling us back. God wants to demonstrate more power. The church is elevating. The church is shifting. And God he wants to release a power that we thought we lost. God, oh God, oh God. He wants to give us back what we thought we set down. People have died for this. People have sacrificed for this. I will not back up. I will do what God has called me to do. I'll be charged to be a witness. I'll be charged to have them demonstration. Yeah. 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 I need somebody to say, God, you can use me. You can use me. Hope this is helping somebody. Listen, the last thing, the last thing that the Holy Spirit does, first, it changes us mentally. What I could not do on my own, I now can do. I don't have to fall. He's a keeper. I don't have to sing it. He's a keeper. Now it charges me to be a witness, not just in testimony or my words, but by demonstration. The next thing that when we have the Holy Ghost, you understand that it restores your rightful authority. And I'm done. It restores your rightful authority. We look in the book of Genesis and we see the fall of man. God took his time out and he made man in his image and in his likeness. And this is important to understand because his likeness meant his characteristics. It meant his ability. This is why when Adam looked around and he began to name stuff is because he had the likeness of God that when he spoke, it became. When he spoke, that's what it was. And, and so when the fall of man had come, um, we severed 
our connection to our authority. We severed our connection to be able to speak like God intended us to speak. Now, um, I want you to know that it's by the blood that we're saved, but it is the Holy Ghost that reconnects me to my authority. I need somebody to know today that God wants to restore the authority that he had once given to man. Um, he wants to give you back um, what you thought you'll never have again. Um, um, the blood reconnected my relationship. Um, the blood uh, made me no longer an enemy of God. The blood uh, made me a friend of God. Uh, but now, uh, um, Jesus told the disciples, he said, I need you uh, to go back to Jerusalem for a while, and I'll send the promise of, of my Father uh, upon you. Uh, and when you are endued with power from on high, uh, it says it like this, uh, but after you shall receive receive power after the Holy Ghost uh, has come upon you. Uh, um, the blood uh, it washed me and made me whole. Uh, oh, but the Holy Ghost, uh, when it came upon me, uh, it gave me back my authority. Uh, it reconnected me back to the source. Uh, and now uh, I don't have to be lopsided. Now uh, I don't have to be broken. Uh, now uh, I don't have to walk with my head down. Now uh, I will never be defeated. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I need somebody to walk in your authority. I need somebody to take that authority. Go out into your community. I need somebody to go walk and knock on the house of the drug dealer. I need somebody to go to the homeless man on the corner. I need somebody to go to the mother that needs some help. I need somebody to go and talk to the young man that's living his life in the street. I need somebody to go to the prostitute tell her there's another way. I need somebody that will be able to say because I'm a believer I'll demonstrate what God has done in my life. I need somebody that will go and take their authority and minister to somebody else. Don't sit down with your power. Don't sit down on your assignment. It's evangelism here. It's you Sunday. I need some young folk that said, God, give me power. God, you can use me. God, you can feel me. I'll go if you need somebody. Yeah, I'll do it. If you need somebody, say yes in here. God, oh God, oh God, you can use me. When? When, 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 when we're connected, we connected to our authority. Things begin to happen. Um, I believe, y'all gonna laugh at this. I believe that when we have the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, it gives us dominion like it did in Genesis. Adam had dominion over every creeping and crawling thing on the earth. It was about 10 years ago, we were going to a service, went to the service to go here. I wanna say it was Pastor Lundy. I think he was preaching somewhere. And after the service was done, uh, we had come out the church and we had walked to my vehicle, got in the car, and we were driving down the street. And I noticed these young ladies, they were like all kind of blocking in the middle of the street. And so I'm, I'm nosy, I'm from Detroit. So when you see folk just kind of, you, you say, what's going on over there? So I, I pulled the car over and I got out and I walked up and I said, hey, what's going on here? And they said, oh, this little kitten, like it's dying. And the kitten was a kitten kitten, y'all. And so I reached over, I walked over, I looked down. And at this point, Prophet Ray is now walking toward me and the, all the women are standing around. And I picked the kitten up in my hand. And the lady said, oh, the mother has abandoned him or it, it's gonna die. It's not gonna make it. And so 
I held the kitten in my hand and I looked at all the women and I said, Lord, I know I have the Holy Spirit. So because of that, I have dominion over everything that walks and crawls on the earth. So that means I can communicate with it. So Lord, and this is my prayer out loud. So Lord, allow the cat to understand me. So I looked down at the cat and the cat had shallow breathing. And he was going, <laughs> and you can tell the cat was on his way out. And I said, excuse me, little cat. Do you want to live? And when I asked him if he wanted to live, as God is my witness, the cat looked up at me and nodded his head to the point that all the women began to scream. So I looked at the cat and I said, well, thank you for your agreement. And I said, I speak now with the authority of Jesus Christ, with the spirit that dwells inside of me. You shall not die and you will live. And I said, so live and live now. I put the cat back down on the ground and he was laying on his side and he still had a shallow breathing. And when I looked down at him again, I said, live and live now. And all of a sudden the cat took one last breath and then his breathing pattern changed. He was breathing normally and I said, look at that. So I said, all right, y'all, y'all have a good day. And so I turned around and I started walking back to my car and I hear the women calling me. I said, what? And they say, look. So I said, oh, the cat is following me. So I kept walking. He will walk. When I stop, he will stop. And I looked at her. I said, oh, you can't go home with me. And the cat just looked up at me and I said, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't have no more pets. I got dogs. They'll eat you. So you can't go home with me. But so I started walking. And the cat kept walking, following me. So I said, ladies, does anybody want this kitten? So one girl said, oh, I'll take it. And so she walked toward the kitten and he picked up this, this pace to follow me. So then I stopped. And I said, Lord, if this cat was able to hear me, then I'll speak to the community right now. And I said, wherever you are, the mother of this cat, I call you out now, come and get your baby. And I stood there for a minute, waiting to see what was gonna happen. Nothing happened. So I said, okay, I'm gonna try this one more again. I said, wherever you at, cat, come get your baby. And I stood there. And then about five minutes later, I heard some meowing. And we looked up and there was a cat coming from the house across the street. And behind her were other kittens. I said, there's the mother. And you could tell she was afraid to come across the street. And I said, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. So she ran across the street. The kitten was standing next to me. She picked the kitten up in her mouth and ran back across the street. And the women said, sir, who are you? And I said, I'm just the believer that believes that God has given us authority. If God can use us to speak to the animal kingdom, He'll use us to speak to our community. It is time we rise up and take our rightful places. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for every believer that has been filled with the spirit. God, use us. God, make us ready and fit for our assignments. That every assignment is not the same that some are meant to minister to the thousands and some are only meant to minister to the tens, but God, you've given us each an assignment. So give us the power to fulfill the assignment. Now, God, if there are anybody that's watching, they say, well, I'm not saved. And I don't know if I need to be, prick their hearts, prick their hearts now. And let them make the choice that will change their whole life. Let them make the choice and say, Jesus is my desire. God, we pray now for O Landmark. We pray that you continue 
to use them as a beacon of hope in the community. God, we thank you for Bishop and First Lady. God, we thank you for their labor of love and sacrifice. God, you see all that they give up. You see all that they do and they never complain. So God, I pray now and I ask that you would bless them in a special way. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. If you're watching and you say, hey, I heard everything you said and I'm not saved, just repeat after me. Lord, I accept Jesus into my heart. I believe that he is the son of God and that you sent him and that he died for my sins. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Wash me. Jesus, be my savior. Jesus, you can make my heart your home. I confess and I believe. Jesus, purge me and make me new. If you just pray that prayer or anything similar to, similar to that, we welcome you to the family. We welcome you to the family of God. And now that the blood has cleansed you, all you got to do is wait for the infilling. So if you need a church home, Old Landmark is available for you. If you're in Fort Wayne, we're a great place to connect to. If you're in Detroit, Be Calm is a great place to be connected to. We don't want you out there by yourself. There is a body of believers waiting to embrace you, find you a home. And guess what? Remember, there is nothing too hard for God. God bless. What a word. How God has blessed. Thank you, Pastor Nichols. Tremendous word from God. All we got to do is trust in the Lord and know that everything is going to be all right. You've heard a word today, and I believe you've been blessed wherever you are. You need the Holy Ghost. He made it plain. He made it clear and showed you how the Holy Ghost will bless your life. And every one of you have the opportunity to enjoy this treasure. It's nothing like serving the true and the living God. God bless you. Thank you so much. What a phenomenal youth service this has been. And I believe somebody has been reached. I believe hearts have been touched and lives have been changed. Pastor Nichols has spoken out of his heart. And I believe you have had the opportunity of a lifetime to give your life to Jesus. Serve him with all your heart. And as he said, Old Landmark's a great church. You can be a part of it right now. As well as the Breaking Chains Overcoming Ministries there in the city of Detroit. Find a church, love a church, be a part of the ministry. You can write me at bishop at oldlandmark.com. Amen. We'll communicate with you, pray for you, and lead you on to victory in Jesus' name. We ask all of you to be faithful. Give God your honor. Give God your service. Bless him with all that you have. Even now, we're going to bless the Lord through giving. Giving is a part of worship. Off we ask you to give your gift by way of the GiveLify app or the cash app. Oh, Landmark, we need you to step up and do all that God has assigned you to do. Every believer, every well-wisher, support the church. Amen. Support the ministry. Watch God turn it around for you. Watch God bring the Holy Ghost to life in you and stir you up. And you'll find yourself doing more in him you've ever done before. Well, come on and bring the Lord your gift. Sacrifice unto the Lord. Honor him with your substance. Watch God turn it around. Be a witness. Let somebody know you gave. Let somebody know that you believe in giving. Put I gave in the comment. It will encourage others to know it's all right to give. God is going to do a great thing and a great work in you. I feel God turning some stuff around. Opening doors and making a way. Causing us to triumph. Causing us to enter in to a new place in him. God bless you, Pastor Nichols and the Superintendent Nichols and all the members of the church there, and to Old Lamech, all the well-wishers. Whatever you do, honor God. You know you need the Holy Ghost. That's the word today. You need it. And the Holy Ghost wants you 
to accept the gift that comes. Jesus paid the price. Now you got to trust and receive it and everything will be all right. Jesus is going to make everything all right, won't he? Thank you. Make your gift unto the Lord by way of the cash app, dollar sign, old landmark, or by way of the Givelify, old landmark, Kojic, old landmark, C-O-G-I-C. We'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock with some friends. Ask you to come on, be a part of the worship. Round this day off with the Lord. Come on back, be part of 6 o'clock. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the Lord. Feast on the word that have been spoken. And let's give God some praise. God bless you. You'll be all right. You'll make it all right. God bless you, First Lady Amos. God bless you, Mother Webb, Sister Lee, and Sister Abby. Amen. Sister Sarah, appreciate you. Great word. Sister Stroud. Oh, yes. Dr. Angie Mayo. Amen. Mother Janet Williams, we appreciate you. Oh, yes. Our great deacon, Deacon Luther Amos, and the Amos family there in your household. To each and every one of you, we honor God. We love you. We're praying for you. And I, I see you. I see you. Oh, thank you for supporting today. Thank you for being a part of the worship. Thank you. DCOM out of the city of Detroit. Great church to be with. Great church to visit if you're there. Watch God make everything all right in your life. God bless you. See you tonight at 6. You'll make everything all right. Hey, hey. It'll be all right, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, it will be all right.